uh, types of activities that you and your friends um, enjoy going to? Well, I enjoy playing cards and um, or bingo or just maybe having a little dance or some music, you know, just things and having lunch together, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Good companionship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Great. Well, thank you for your application and thanks for uh, your time here today. Commissioner Smelker. Thank you for applying. Um, the county has started a training program for people on boards and commissions, and um, it's a short training, half a day, something like that. Would you be open to going to one of these trainings when it's offered? I think it would be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Commissioner Gibson. I have no questions. Thanks for applying. So my commissioners do um, a very good job of asking questions, and I don't have any questions for you either this morning. Um, we'll be making a recommendation to the full board since this is a committee meeting in the near future. Um, thanks for coming in today, and thank you for it, being interested in serving our community. That's it? Yep. Thanks. Pretty painless today. <clears throat> so I am free to go? Sure. All right. <laughs> Our meetings can get boring sometimes. So, um, here to present our next item is Tammy Price. Um, at this time, She's not Tammy here. is not here yet. You can skip her. I'm going to skip her and come back. How about we go to Matt Hausley? Matt, did I kill your last name? That was perfect, actually. I really appreciate that. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm I've really a lot of trying. versions over the years, and some of them nowhere near sounding like anything like that so I'm trying really hard so at this time the chair would entertain a motion to upgrade um, current records management and jail management systems so moved second moved by Gibson second by Connor Matt the floor is yours good morning uh, to each of you I hope to try to keep this as concise as possible rather than trying to read the entire agenda request I'll try to give you a, a synopsis uh, it's quite involved uh, but and it's a little bit more complicated than a normal normal request but basically what we're asking for is to upgrade our records management and jail management systems that keep our records literally uh, in the right direction uh, and we would like to purchase uh, a product from a company called Central Square Technologies. Uh, they offer different public safety solutions, platforms, uh, and the particular platform that we're looking to purchase is, is called Zerker. Uh, Zerker was interviewed as part of our investigation in conjunction with uh, the Berry County Central Dispatch folks. Uh, and Director Lehman is here to support uh, that information. We basically looked at three different uh, platforms that we could use uh, and so Central Dispatch has moved forward on their uh, advancement toward the Zerker product uh, so the timing is sort of now best for the Berry County Sheriff's Office to think about moving forward with similar advanced technology we currently have an RMS JMS system known as Superion Superion is one of the companies owned by Central Square Technologies. So there's basically four components of Central Square Technologies. Superion is the one we're using. However, we're looking at going to this Zerker product, uh, mostly because Superion is uh, outdated. It's 10 years old. Uh, it's changed name several times. And we've been informed by uh, Central Square Technologies that they no longer plan on supporting the product. They will answer questions and try to resolve issues, but there's no, not going to be any more research and development into that particular wing, if you will, of Central Square Technologies. Uh, so no further upgrades uh, will be coming out, and so it's time to think about moving on from Superion to uh, a, a better platform. Uh, so in April of 2019, this year, last month, uh, when Central Dispatch uh, formally accepted the bid from Central Square for their computer-aided dispatch, uh, it actually uh, motivated us to kind of stay within the same time frame uh, to not only save cost, 
but to allow for that technology upgrade to be uh, seamless. Uh, at the same time, we're going to be improving uh, our efficiency and responsiveness uh, and service to the residents of Berry County. Uh, it's a much more advanced system. In fact, it's pretty spectacular. The numerous uh, demonstrations that they were able to put on for us and other agencies and central dispatch as well. So we are uh, we're, we're looking forward for the chance to perhaps be on the same page with central dispatch, which is something that we are currently not and have not been for the last 10 years. They have their system, we have our system. This is one system. The computer-aided dispatch, the CAD system for Central is going to work in conjunction with our RMS and JMS system. So it's, it's fairly seamless. Uh, Zerker is state of the art. There are three or four other counties in the state that currently have this program. Other states have the program and use the program. And as you've seen from some of the material, it's, it's widely supported. But the, just the features available with the Zerker program uh, just outclass, quite honestly, the Superion program. The first one, the one that we get to hear about the most, is the support. When something goes wrong, how is it going to get fixed? Uh, Zerker offers a 24-hour a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year availability. If a midnight deputy has a problem in corrections or on the road and they have a problem with their technology, they can call this company and somebody will actually answer the phone. Okay. Uh, upgrades. Upgrades in the technology can be done through the cloud system. So the way we have to do it now is we have to take our upgrades in a zip drive and push them into every computer and push the upgrade to every computer in every car and in every workstation that we have. This will all be done miraculously through the clouds and the te technology is quite amazing. So uh, we're, we're very impressed with how the technology has improved with this system. In fact, uh, we were fairly amazed. Uh, some of the other features, just briefly talk about some of those features that Zerker will offer. It has a high level of con uh, configurability and customization so that we can make our functionality at the Berry County Sheriff's Office and with other agencies our own. So if we do something a little different than the big city or the bigger county or the smaller city or smaller county, we can make it work for our, for our agency, which is a huge benefit. Not only that, Zerker does interface with all of the other technologies that are involved in law enforcement, lean, CGIS, all those other acronyms that you sometimes hear coming out of my mouth or the sheriff's mouth. So uh, obviously uh, there's a lot of core functionality involved in Zerker, which is the report writing and the jail management system, but there's some really high level capabilities uh, that are available now with Zerker that aren't necessarily available with Superion, such as uh, administrative records, personnel, accident reporting, e-citations, crime mapping, uh, record linking, audit trails, right? So there's uh, equipment tracking, you name it, service dog management, so many features that uh, I would just refer to pages 3 through 11 on the proposal that I've provided to each of you so that you can see some of that functionality. So essentially, uh, uh, what we're asking for is uh, to request the, you, the Board of Commissioners, to authorize uh, the request for funding for this project. Uh, I've provided you with quotes. I also provided you with a quote from a second company, uh, Motorola, offers a product, and you can tell from the uh, prices that uh, you see on those sheets that this is uh, obviously a much lower, uh, much lower uh, price than what Motorola offers. Part of that is because uh, Central Square is already our client, or we're their client, I suppose you could say. So they can offer quite a discount with some of that functionality that a new company would have to charge us for. So they're, they come in at a very, what I consider, reasonable price, and uh, we would like to go forward with that. Anybody have any questions from the under sheriff? Thank you, under sheriff. Um, my first question is: What are some of what are the records that this software um, holds? I mean, what are the what's the type of information that is um, 
accessible because of the software? All police reports, all accident reports, all jail records. Uh, and they can, it can go as wide as you want it to. Uh, administrative records, personnel records, training records. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, it's quite robust, and that's one of the biggest attractions for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have that some of that functionality with Superion, but uh, there's an ability to drill down in in Zerker that we don't have in Superion to get further information. Right. Another thing that Zerker will offer was is for any other agencies in the state that want to be able to look at our records, if they also belong to Zerker, then they can look and see if we've had contact with the same individuals either through our jail management or through the field services mm -hmm. end of things. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of sharing uh, that happens, a lot of uh, uh, communication that happens. Mm -hmm. I will say now that the other agencies within our county, the other police agencies, we have four of them now on our Superion program, that being Berry Township, uh, Prairieville Township, Woodland Township, and Nashville PD. They will also have to make a choice if this goes forward. Uh, we uh, have an agreement with them now. They are on our current system, and we would hope that they would want to stay with our system so that we can share those reports between agencies as well. We can't correct anything they do, and they can't correct anything we do. They have administrative rights that to their own reports, as do we. But uh, we'll still be able to look and see what other agencies are doing with a certain individual or a certain business or whatever it may be. Two more questions. The, the next one is um, the uh, lean network. Um, that, the law enforcement information network, is a, a database that you have to have really specific or um, special access to get into. And we've heard across um, the, uh, the state um, reports from people misusing the, the lean network. What type of security does this provide um, to prevent unauthorized access? It, it is basically similar to what Superion offers now. Uh, there are all sorts of firewalls, mm -hmm. uh, passwords. Uh, uh, there's actually a, a module, I believe, that you can actually go in and you, be, to operate, to be a lean operator, a lean user, you have to pass a, a proficiency test. Mm -hmm. I believe Zerker also has that as a module built in. So there are all sorts of firewalls and uh, VPN tunnels, and I don't want to steal Dave's thunder because he's the expert uh, on those things that are high technology, uh, but that... No, we give him enough th thunder. You can take some. Well, I, I, I'm going to be relying on him to help with this process, by the way. IT is definitely going to be involved in creating a, a, a larger bandwidth uh, so that we can use this program. Uh, hopefully the offset is that uh, it will lessen some of their load by having this program where we have such large support systems in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. hopefully that answers your yes, question. Yes, yes. Yeah. Final question is, is pretty quick. Um, I did a ride along, um, I've done a couple of ride alongs with the deputies and um, the connectivity of the computer to the information network um, is um, pretty important. And there are parts of Berry County that it's just not connecting. Will this help? Um, get information into the cars faster? I don't know if it'll be faster. It should have the same coverage and perhaps... Or more reliable, I should say, is the question. Perhaps... More reliable. Great. Director Lehman can... Mm -hmm. But there are devices built into the system that will allow those connectivities to happen. As we know, this is a unique mm -hmm. county in its configuration, and we absolutely are right. You need that. Mm -hmm. uh, you need that. So. Yeah, I think there was an instance where we, um, we had to like disconnect and reconnect, and um, it, it's not uh, the end of the world, but it is a little hassle. So, thanks. Commissioner Geiger, we've recently updated that that system. So the mobile data computer network was a commercial private Verizon network, and now it's technically a public safety. Oh, great. Fleet. 
public safety grace private network, and I can speak on that. That's a function. That's a function of 911. Okay. So that's something that in 2012, when that system was created, that type of network priority preemption mm -hmm. special rates didn't even exist for right. public safety. In February of this year, we transition. We transition into that. And the physical computers, the Dell actual mobile data computers, were updated between September and November of last year. So the platform, the Zerker platform, is essentially a little more secure of a platform. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, technical security is a huge is a huge matter of importance to us. But in reference to lean, all the appropriate licensing and agreements are in place between NCIC and Zerker, and most of that stuff is going to be permissions based. So a lot of that responsibility is going to fall on the administrative end, how you set that system up, what, mm -hmm. what type of policies and procedures you have in place to drive that. But all in all, it's it's a much more stable and secure platform than what both of us are currently operating off of. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I have no more questions. Commissioner Connor. Thanks for bringing this. I understand, you know, technology changes so fast. And I know that we have struggled over the last 10 years without being able to talk to each other. Uh, even before that. So I do have a question regarding the four townships. What kind of hurdles are they going to be faced with? The same costs, the same issues? They're going to be responsible for the, their own maintenance. And I would expect uh, from the last estimates we had is they have about a 600 to $900 annual cost for their maintenance. However, that may increase because you have a more robust system. So uh, we have reached out to each of those agencies Thank and you. let them know that we are talking about this change and so that they can be prepared to make decisions that they need to make. Uh, if they wished, I believe that if they paid the licensing fees and uh, the maintenance fees, they could stay on Superion. Uh, we're, what, so how it works, uh, uh, Commissioner Connor, is, is that we actually cover the licensing fees for those agencies now. Okay. So we would continue to do that with the new program as sort of a benefit, an incentive for them to stay on the same program as us. However, if they they can at the point that we go live, if we were to, if this were to go forward, they would have to make that decision to stay with the Central Square Technology Zerka program or find a different program. Uh, for example, there is one agency, one police agency, two police agencies that use different reporting records management systems. We're obviously the only ones that have the jail management system, so the other agencies get the benefit from the fact that we keep the jail management system records as part of their being a law enforcement agency in our county. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes. All right, we've got lots of questions. Sure. Commissioner Jackson. Morning. Good morning. Um, how long have we been on the Superior, Superior system? You said 10 years? 10 years. Okay, and you don't have any idea what that initially cost us, did you? I do not. Okay. I'm sure there is probably historical information about that. Uh, I can always look that up and get back to you, but I think that it's pretty comparable. I know that, uh, as an example of comparison, our our Superion fees for maintenance and and licensing is only two thousand dollars less than the Zerker program, so it's it's very comparable in price at this point. Okay. But I don't know if someone were to go to Superion today and say I want to buy your program, whether it would be more or less than the Zerker program. Okay, and I saw there was, I saw you also had Motorola in there as one of them. Correct. Third vendor was also in the same ballpark as Motorola. They were a lot more expensive. Or they were much more expensive and nowhere near as robust. They were quite. Uh, they, as Director Lehman so explained so well to me, is that they actually <clears throat> their systems are three completely different systems. So you have a CAD system, you have uh, RMS system, and you have a JMS system. So you have three completely different systems. It just wasn't going to work. Uh, we spent a lot of time in demos looking at the different programs and trying to find out what would work best for us, and this was the one by far. 
Okay. Um, and Zerker, I know in the in their information, they said they have over 7,000 or 7,500 units. Is there anybody in our immediate area that's engaged with Zerker? The closest I could find, and I, please correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Lake County has that. Ionia County is shopping now and wants to see our Zerker program. Is there, I believe Eaton County is also, no? There are several. Okay. Okay. Did you reach out to those counties who have had this platform, talk to them in depth as far as functionality issues, problems? Yes, one of our lieutenants did reach out to them, and uh, they had absolutely no complaints. There is some supporting documentation from some other agencies, not in the state. Uh, but I know I recently talked to the undersheriff in Ionia County, and he is very interested in what we have available to view i'm sure he's doing his own demos but uh they're very interested as well so okay um you made the comment uh that this will put the sheriff's department and 911 on the same page that is correct so there's some indication that we're not on the same page or what's the what's the what's the problem or what's what are obviously there's a system that's been functional so that's, that's so right. Anytime someone, I mean, it's two hundred and six thousand dollars. That's a lot of taxpayer. A lot of taxpayer dollars. And when you look at it, it's a little sticker shock. But then you look at Motorola's quote, and you're telling me the other one was even higher. So, um, what, you know, what is what what is this going to allow us to do between the sure. sheriff's department and nine one one that we're not able to do right now? That's absolutely a fair question, and I understand that. So, uh, the, under the system now, and I would. have Appreciate any help I can get from Director Lehman. Anything that would come into Central Dispatch would go into their current CAD system until until the improvement. The way that this system will work is as soon as information is starting to get inputted into the CAD system, that will convert or come over or transition into our information, our reports. So there really isn't a gap necessarily. We still get the information, but it just makes it one more step toward having instantaneous, current, accurate information so there's no chance of miscommunication. We basically get faxes from central dispatch on, let's say you call in that someone uh, uh, damaged your lawn. Gone. Okay. Uh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry if that happened, but. Just bends. Uh, <laughs> so, so. Uh, you know, they would put input the information into the current system that they have and have to fax a form over to us with that information, which we then have to transpose into our system. So the new system will allow the input of that information at the point of contact with Central that will automatically flow into our reporting system. Does that, did I explain it well? So kind kind of. Of. Okay. So the system that we're currently operating on at 1991 Barry County or at 911 Barry County purchased in 1993. We've only ever your had... system at 911. Correct. Okay. Yep. Uh, Logistic Systems Logistics is the name of it. So it's the only CAD system we have ever been on. There is no current interface between the system that we use at 911 and not only the Barry County Sheriff's Office, but any of the of our other public safety partners in the county, whether that be police, fire, EMS. But we're not an anomaly. A lot of places, a lot of places, a lot of jurisdictions operate that way. So this system, instead of it being, right now we're operating on two disparate systems, instead of it being a database for CAD, a database for RMS, and a database for JMS, it's all one database. And how it works in this system, it will be permissions based that we will obviously have to create on the back end, on the administrative end, is who has access to what would not be appropriate for the dispatchers to have full access to all of the jail's records or all of the sheriff's office records and vice versa. So essentially, 911 is the first first responder. So when we take the 911 call, we create the call for service or the incident, we're entering as much information as we can in. Demographic information, incident location, phone number, caller information, 
persons involved, vehicles involved, do these people have wants, warrants, are these vehicles stolen, all of that type of information goes into the call for service. When we attach a law enforcement unit to it, um, all law enforcement units in Barry County have an MDC, so they have access to mobile CAD. So they are seeing a different version than what we're seeing in dispatch. So same, exact same information, it's just displayed differently. All of that information will then tr will follow the, the call, the incident, or the person, if you will. So let's say a drunk driver was arrested in front of your house. Okay, I'm just going to use your, your area for... For, for these purposes. <laughs> so either initiated from a traffic stop or we take an 911 call, we create the incident and then put all the information on it. Dispatch is essentially done with it. When, when it's assigned to law enforcement, law enforcement's done with it, dispatch is done with it. But they aren't. Now that transfers over into their records management system. They don't have to re-enter demographic information. They don't have to re-enter warrant information or person's information. So that's going to create redundancy essentially it'll be a time saver and it's going to decrease the issue for error so many times you know we'll we'll be looking for a person's you know there's a there's a fair amount of investigative work that happens in the 911 center you know as law enforcement's being assigned to um to complaints and while they're starting their investigation we're doing as much as we can to assist them their records are different from my records so we this person might this person might have a hyphenated middle name but we're able to see that from the jail records. We'll call over to the jail and say, do you have a phone number for this person or do you have a phone number for that person? Now it's all going to be one database. It's going to be, it's going to be one system. And so that's going to eliminate a lot, of, a lot of that on the back end. Um, the other thing is, is we, the system that we're presently on um, assigns a call for service number for every complaint. And so how we currently operate in Barry County is it starts over every day at midnight. So um, today, for instance, what's today, the 7th? It is. So call for service numbers start over at midnight, 050719-1 at midnight. And so that's it. We and The call for service number is very important to us. It's only mildly important to them, and it's really not important to the jail at all. Their agency complaint number is very critical for them. It's mission critical for them. And so this system will, be, will have the capability to assign each agency, all of our public safety partners, their complaint number, their run number, their department number, as well as our call for service number. And there's a lot of things that are attached to those numbers. Quite often we'll have citizens call us and say, I had an officer come out and I need to talk to them and I have no idea what their name is. Well, depending upon where they're at in the county, it could have been the state police, it could be the Barry County Sheriff's Department, it could be one of the outlying jurisdictional agencies, the village or township police departments, and they don't know. Well, I have a complaint number. We can't search by complaint number right now and so there's just I mean I could talk about this all day long what I would really like for what I would really like for you to do is to come out and look at it I'd be happy okay. to show it to you okay what that means when I say we create the incident in CAD then it goes to mobile CAD then it forwards on to RMS and then if it's an incident where somebody is you know taken into custody and lodged at the Barry County Jail all of that information will then forward over for the correction staff so they're not re-entering names they're not re-entering dates of birth addresses all of that type of stuff. They'll be able to initially watch the incident in real time as it takes place. Okay. Well, that's good information because every time someone comes forward with a proposal, this is going to save us time and money and taxpayer dollars and stuff like this. But your system, you said, is from 1991. Three. 1993. Okay. Are you guys on Zerker right now? Have you implemented it yet? Or is this nope. something, is this 206000 a combined effort between 911 and the sheriffs, or do you have a separate cost for? And it's more. And it's more. <laughs> it's more, but there there are there are a lot of shared and managed services. Those are the things that we haven't gotten into. There are shared and managed services in us sharing a system. So there will be two servers. There'll be a production server and a training server or a backup server. One will be housed at 911, and it's my understanding Dave's not here. One's he going to be housed here, right, Dave? Correct. Right. And so um, Zerker manages or monitors those servers 24-7. And so once you will become a Zerker customer, the hardware is included in the proposal for life. So there is no more buying servers. There is no more managing servers. There is no more buying extended maintenance and warranty on servers, which is really common for us out at the, out at the, out at the 911 center. We buy servers. Warranty is only good for three or four years. We still have some life, some life cycle left in them, so then we have to turn around and spend additional resources to, to purchase more to go under warranty. Those are costs. Those are expenses that will go away. As long as you're on the Zerker platform, your hardware is included. Um, are those servers going to be housed at 911 or at the Sheriff's Department, or is that cloud-based where 
it's going to be remote hosted. No, nope. so one is going to be housed at 911, one physical server will be housed at 911, and then one is going to physically be housed here with Barry County IT. Okay. I looked at that line and I said software and server total of 93,600. And I'm like, servers just aren't that expensive anymore. Security is expensive and all the different things that go in with it like that. And that's why I wondered <laughs> if this was totally cloud-based, if it was all off-site. <laughs> Or what that was, it's just like you said, that's a little bit of sticker shock for it, but you do make a good case for the functionality of how that works. And and looking at, let's talk about potentially going forward with the jail, functionality, crossover, old facility, new facility, tying in, is this going to be a seamless transition if in fact that happens, there's not an issue? I mean, we're not going to come back here in five years and say, uh, Zerker doesn't like the color of our bricks, so we need to spend another $200,000. Right. No, that's a great question, Commissioner Jackson, and actually it will be seamless. The only thing that may change is you may have more units, if you will, in a new facility if you have a larger facility. So other than that, it is portable. We're actually getting out ahead of any issues that we may have if something were to go forward on the construction of a new jail. Uh, so you're actually kind of uh, uh, taking care of business uh, in, a, in a timely manner, if you will, or we are, uh, trying to uh, make that as seamless as possible. So. Okay. Well, that is a lot of information. Thank One both thing of I you. I want to touch on real quick. <laughs> Data conversion is huge for us. For Freedom of Information Act request, I mean, we, we, have, to, we have to maintain the information that we already have in both of our databases. So that's a large portion of those expense, converting the old data from the old system into, into the new system. So it, it takes time and money. And the, and the Zerker platform is costing us 25000 a year for maintenance? That's or correct. For their ongoing support? Is that maintenance and support in that one figure? Uh, I believe it's broken out into two figures. I'm sure, nine one one has their own cost associated with that as well. Is it yes, the same? Yes, that's correct. Course? So there's a subscription fee and a maintenance fee. So, and that is something that we will have to pay annually, but it is equivalent to what we're paying now for a le lesser product. Okay, and you're going to continue if the townships those local police departments or units decide to upgrade to this, then you're going to continue to pick up the cost for that subscription for them as well? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Like I said, I appreciate the thorough information there, and I may take you up on that to come out and look at it. I've been out to 911 before, but like you said, when you hear everybody talks about this is going to be the latest, greatest, and then five years later we're buying something else, that's the latest and greatest. But this sounds like this is going to really help us as far as being seamless report writing, all the different things that go into it with the county. So, and I think another thing to focus on or to keep in mind is that um, it, it puts us all on the same page and on the same platform as several different different agencies. And so it kind of it kind of gets away any not to rehash and like any like old any old issues of being on separate systems and stuff, but it puts it puts all of that to bed for not obviously we're going to share some services. So there's some cost savings to us. It will help us with increase our efficiency and our effectiveness, and I feel like it kind of will bring a united front um, amongst the amongst the public safety public safety community here in Barry County. Hey, we're we're, we're all live on the on the same platform. Well, so. well, there's some benefit to that. I mean, when you look at what happened in Kalamazoo four or five years ago with shooting and a guy running around town, it didn't seem like they could communicate and locate where if there's anything we can do to expedite response times and put everybody on the same page. That's that's in mission critical. That's a good thing. So absolutely. absolutely about the service we offer to our customers and those are the residents of Barry County. So anything we can do and those traveling through Barry County. So anything we can do to make that better, that's what we're looking to do. So. Thank you both. Great information. When you say that we will do the the subscriptions and, and licenses, I see in here there's a mobile records, personnel core, records core. Are we the county paying for all the townships and cities on that also? Yes, we are currently, and under this proposal, we would be into the future. They do not put any money into their maintenance or? Maintenance, they do. Maintenance is theirs. Uh, however, uh, we have been paying those license fees to have everybody on that same, same page. 
So really the county is kind of paying double for certain areas of the county for police protection. I think we you pay can make for that it argument, through the county yes. and through townships and stuff. Yeah, the, the feeling is, and I, I'm sorry the sheriff isn't here to address this because I asked him that specific question. Uh, he, he just couldn't be here today. He had something else happening. So uh, the idea is, is to make sure that we can be on the same page for the price that we've agreed to pay for their particular licensing. So we're sharing the cost, but in technically... Uh, one could argue your point. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a follow-up question on that? Uh, could it also be argued that by connect um, investing in the local departments, we're going to save ourselves money because we don't have to spend time converting the data when it comes back? I mean, uh, I can communicate um, with telegraph to somebody, but um, they're going to spend some time decoding it you know doesn't Absolutely. save us money if we can use the data faster we uh yeah that, that's really true and and really we do interact with each other constantly now anyway we handle calls in uh you know berry township prairieville township nashville woodland all the time as it is when they're not available so this is sort of kind of going along the same vein that we're trying to make sure that everybody can be can be together in this particular effort so going along with ben's comment there it is also can be said that there's another officer on patrol that the county is not paying for <coughs> the township is paying for all we would be paying for is it that's correct that's all we got mr connor so you made the comment about it, life. And so I understand the maintenance fees and when there has to be work done on it and everything. But what does that mean when you said it's covered for by life? So as long as we are a Zerker customer, okay. so a Central Square customer, if you will, Zerker is the name of the product, but Central Square is the company. Okay. The hardware, so meaning the servers that we operate off, the production live server okay. that we'll be working off of, and then the training and backup server, we don't have to go out and turn around and buy servers. So like right now, from, from the 911 perspective, and I'm sure Dave could probably speak to this for the Superion product that they're currently on, um, we have to supply and maintain those servers. We have three at, at, out at the 911 center right now that host a, host a variety of things all pertaining to our CAD. And um, so when you initially purchase hardware like server it's an ex it's it's an expense it's a large expense then you also have to purchase a support and maintenance agreement to to accompany it in right. the event that something happens well basically the the technology companies right now you can only purchase the days of being able to purchase a five-year agreement or a seven-year support agreement are gone uh, what i found is you can purchase three or four initially when you buy the purchase and then you have to extend it and then we just did this at the at the turn of the year out at 911 and so those are expenses that we will no longer have to pay they're a part of our maintenance and support they're a part of the initial they are, they're a part of the initial the initial proposal when you if you decide to move forward with this but in two years if a server dies it's a part of your support and maintenance it's up to central square to replace that server Oh, okay. So, and these servers are large servers. They are each going to be five terabytes or five terabytes or larger to hold all of basically our traffic. So there will be a live CAD, JMS, and RMS, so CAD, RMS, JMS on the production server. And there will also be that redundancy on the training or the, or the backup server. All right. Okay. Thank you. And to touch base on the training also, just to add to that, when and if this were to move forward, the training would all be done in-house with the other agencies as well so that we would all be together to learn the system, including uh, you know, those things that are pertinent to central dispatch. So. And the townships that choose? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, I think the important thing to point out, and I'll get to you in a second, um, I think for the townships that use this, they fall under the sheriff's department umbrella, but they also respond to mutual aid calls, and that will make it a seamless dispatch of a mutual aid call. The, it'll they'll be attached to the same incident number, it, as long as they use the same software. Um, the equipment that dispatch has, 
um, is very antiquated in, in technology. And if you've never been in a dispatch center, if there's not a seamless transition, it's a mess. And when you've got something hectic going on, like a great big huge fire or a mass casualty event, you need to have that seamless um, interface. And I, I can't stress enough how a stressful situation in dispatch can be become less stressful when you have something that the this, this system is going to give. That transfers um, out to the field, too. Exactly. And, and as long as everything is... It, it works, and I'm, I'm excited that this is one product that is going to go from start to finish in, in the county. I, I'm, I'm happy that you guys found it and found it at a reasonable cost. Um, Commissioner Smoker. Matt, do you happen to know what you pay on maintenance for Superion? I do. Because you're getting a lot more with Zerker, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. I've got that number here. We are currently paying uh, $47,674.61 for annual maintenance fees. That's including the licensing. Uh, the new uh, price with the Zerker product is $50,293. So there's a $2,618.39 difference. So for a lot better For product. a lot more product. I, uh, I also appreciate that the sheriff's department and 911 is working together and going to the same product. And uh, one other question: Say another township, another police department, anything comes on, will theirs be paid for also? That would have to be something that would a bridge to cross when we get there. Uh, depending on the size of the department, we want to. Obviously, we were going to try to be responsible as we can. I do think we set some sort of precedent, though, for, to pay for part of it. Uh, but let's say a larger department, such as, say, Hastings PD, were to be interested, then we would have to have some discussions and, and talk about some budgets. Very good. Thank you. The servers are sized, are sized to be able to handle that. Oh, they are? That growth. They are. They are. Thank you. Other questions? So just a point of order, I miss spoke on the um the motion so i would like to read it over and if the two that supported it would agree um so the motion before the board is to recommend to the board of commissioners authorization to purchase an integrated public safety software platform commensurate with current technological advances to the law enforcement records management system rms the jail management system jms from Central Square Technologies for $206,229 with funds to be paid from the data processing fund. I had a, a motion by Gibson, approved a second by Connor. Do you still agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there any other questions for the under sheriff? Already seeing none. Um, the question before the committee is to recommend to the Board of Commissioners authorization to purchase an integrated public software, public safety software platform commensurate with current technological advances to the Law Enforcement Records Management System, RMS, and Jail Management System, JMS, from Central Square Technologies for $206,000, or $206,229,000, with funds to be paid from the data processing fund. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The item is approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, here to present our next item is Tammy Price. They're going to take. She's still not here. She's here. This will be was quick. here somewhere. I saw her come in. Okay. See, she will be quick. Good morning. I'm sorry for my tardiness. At this time, the chair would entertain a motion to recommend to the board of commissioners approval of the fiscal year 2020 OCC grant application. I move. Support. Moved by Smelker, support by Jackson. Tammy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, fiscal year 2020, it's crazy that we're already there. Um, the grant for 2020 has an increase of $11,492 over the current fiscal year. And um, that's for a few different reasons. Uh, Carolyn Brower, our administrative assistant, is spending 50% of her time working um, on OCC stuff. So I've increase that request for um, funding for her 
currently that's under the drug court, and so I'm trying to shift that to OCC. Um, also, we have increased uh, our request for additional funds for anger management as that program seems to be taking off. Um, our contract with United Way for the success coaching is um, going up to two, going up by $250 this year, so that's in there. And drug testing supplies um, will be increased as well. We have decreased our request for COG services. Um, we have individual sessions included in our program currently that we're not using, and so I've taken some of those out. There will still be um, some individual COG sessions for those people who have excused absences. Um, in response, we had to support why we were asking for additional funds, and we've increased projected enrollments for Gatekeeper. Um, we are already halfway through the year, and we've just about met our total year enrollment for that during this fiscal year. So our programming is really taking off significantly. So Gatekeeper has been increased, and both the male and COG female enrollments um, this current fiscal year have increased significantly. We're almost at 100% and we're only partway through the year. And so I increased those for fiscal year 2020 as well. We broadened the eligibility criteria to allow our more offenders to attend programming. And um, just to let you know, our programming seems to be working. In 2018, our prison commitment rate was 17.4%. And Currently, this fiscal year, it's at 8.1%, so that's a huge decrease. Wow. I'm sorry, could you say that figure again? The prison commitment rate. Last year, for the entire year um, of fiscal year 2018, it was 17.4%. And so far this year, uh, this was through March, it's at 8.1%. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just asking that you approve the filing of the grant. Uh, they will later come back and give us the offer, the amount of funds that they offer. So I'll be back before you, um, just kind of solidifying what we get for fiscal year 2020. Any questions for Tammy? Appreciate all your work on it. Reading through some of that, it's amazing, the depth and the details and the questions. I hope, I hope it's a template that you get to use versus recreating this every year because what is it 50 some pages of questions and answers and information it's detailed so appreciate your work on that thank you thank you i can tell you that the, their budget is a moving target and there is constantly a change in this grant that grant this funding that funding the state will tell them this that and and you work magic with the numbers that they give you so thank you um if there's no other questions um the question before the committee is uh, to recommend to the Board of Commissioners approval of the fiscal 2020 OCC grant application. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The item is approved. How about we take a little break? Um, let's try to be back no later than 10 o'clock. No later than, well, that says 10 o'clock. Okay, thank you. So.